Never in a million years I would have imagined that our club would be in a position to sign a legend like Sergio Ramos. I mean, we're a teeny tiny club that only started in the Segunda Division last season. But now, we're in La Liga, competing against the likes of Barcelona, Real Madrid and Atletico Madrid. And with Sergio Ramos being available as a free agent, this might be our chance to create history. Guys, I cannot believe this, but Sergio Ramos is literally available for free. Can we pull this off a legend like him playing for s2g club the football there's not going to be nothing like it man we've got to pull this off and you guys saw he's still 82 rated he's still got it some decent stats all round the experience might be exactly what we need to not just avoid relegation but push for a top half finish but it always comes down to this uh we've just got two million in the bank and we're gonna have to make it count i want sergio ramos guys we're gonna try and pull this off no matter what there we are guys negotiating now with it's Sergio Ramos, whose contract with PSG, I think, terminated. So he's now figuring out what's next. Maybe S2G Club, the football, could be his final club. All right, crucial squad role for Sergio. We know you're good enough. A two-year deal works for me just fine. Release clause, remember, every player we sign from now on has got to have a release clause because we're in Spain. What a silly little rule to have. But we'll put in a 20 million release clause, which I think is fair. If we get that for Ramos, I'd say that's a dub. But hopefully not in the first season because I want to see how good Ramos can be for us. But there you go. I'm offering him 33,000 per week, a reasonable contract. He's willing to accept it. And we've just signed World Cup winner Sergio Ramos, multiple time Champions League winner, multiple time La Liga winner. What a legend to bring in. This is one of the biggest signings I think we've ever made. This is huge. Welcome back guys to another episode of the Creator Club series in Spain. And we've just started off this episode with a banger. Like I can't can't believe Sergio Ramos is going to be wearing an s 2 GFC kit for the rest of this season and hopefully many more. But also, I think I've got some apologies to dish out. I know, guys, I know it's been literally like a week since the last episode. But guys, I was just so freaking in. Like, I've never felt this bad for this last week like ever. Honestly, I had a high fever, cold, cough, literally everything. You guys can probably hear my voice now. It's not exactly the same, but I'm, I'm, I'm definitely a lot better now. And it's time to get back to business. Do I want to even read the replies to this? Well, okay, at least some of them are decent. Get well soon. Thank you very much. Okay, but what is this? Conte was sick, got sacked. Could history repeat itself? Um, th 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 this is not a good sign. Ha ha ha, finished manager. Can't take the pressure of La Liga. Bro, I was legit sick. What was I supposed to do? Ooh, this is a bit harsh. Why couldn't Ray get sick instead of the gaffer? Bro, uh, why am I seeing so much Marcos Ray hate underneath my um illness post? Like, I don't get it. But anyways, one player getting all the brand deals while I was sick with David Silver. Fair enough. Look at that smile. That Gatorade bag of money would have really made him feel nice. But also, guys, January transfer window begins. And that's exactly why we signed Sergio Ramos. But there is going to be more transfers. Because last episode, I received an offer for Ahan Villa. And I thought, you know what? Let me just negotiate. And well, it went through. For 19 million, Villa's going to be leaving. To be fair, he's 77 rated. I think we got a good deal. But now that does mean we're gonna have to, you know, tinker with the team, switch things around and see how that goes and bring in possibly a new midfielder as well. So, ah, it's, it's a bit of a problem. To make it worse, our next game in La Liga is against Atletico Madrid and we're in a pretty bad spot in La Liga where uh, we're in a relegation battle. I do not want to be in this fight. I want to be in the top 10. So, let's hope we can win. To play without Villa, I actually saw some really interesting suggestions in the comments. Sid, I think you should change the formation to a 4-4-2 since Villa is sold. Gabriel and Ray will make a great duo. And do you know what? Maybe that's what Marcos Ray needs. A strike partner up top to just get back in the form. Last episode, he made a big step, started scoring more. But maybe another player alongside him could be useful. Oh, do you know what? Against Atletico, we're not only going to give Sergio Ramos his debut, but I'm going to test out a 4-4-1-1 formation with Marcos Ray center forward, Gabriel Figueroa up top, and of course, the rest like the usual so let's see how this goes by the way for those of you guys who have forgotten gabriel figueroa is six foot eight an absolute unit and last episode we gave him his debut and he was actually pretty good take a look david silva see sula making a lovely run ball into the box gabriel that's what's up he is never gonna miss any headers 
the tall man of the team, the giant. Look at him, man. Honestly, what a beast. For now, though, boys, it's time to play against Atletico, and I'm sure Sergio Ramos is one excited fella because I know he loves playing against Atleti. Marcos Ray in a deeper role is actually finding more space, which is awesome to see. Let's see what he can do. Looking for a chip ball for Gabriel? Ah, oh, come on. Remember, guys, we had an objective to beat Atletico, Barca, or Real. One of them this season. If we can do that, nope. we'll get some extra money. So far, though, it's not looking likely, though. Oh, this is bad. This is bad. This is really bad, as we concede. Memphis Depay with the goal. We just can't compete against any of the big boys in La Liga, honestly. No, oh, this is bad. We might concede again. Ramos clears it away. That's why we've got him in the team. So far, guys, I'll tell you this. This two striker experiment is just not working man we're just constantly having to just defend because we, we can't keep any possession Antoine Griezmann Ramos with a big block but no Mendes makes the save uh, I just can't compete against any of the elite La Liga clubs honestly and we concede another one. Brilliant. This is bad. Honestly, I did not expect to just get destroyed like this even after signing Ramos. Galeano with a good ball. Gabriel Figueroa. He's got that big head as well as the height. But what was he doing? Ati Asula. Lovely ball for Figueroa. And he actually gets a goal. Come on. The world's tallest striker scores. And there's maybe a bit of hope with just nine minutes to go. Oh my God. Galeano has broken through. Galliano! No, Galliano! You had to score that! Oh. Literally now, last attack of the game to just get something. If we can even get a point out of this, I'll be one happy man. Let's see if we can get a goal here. Marcos Ray heads it down. Gonzalez, we still might have it. Marcos Ray taking it wide. Could a cross come in here? It's it's an awful ball, but we still almost did something. Oh, towards the end, I thought we could have nicked something there. In other news, guys, ah, Villar's gone. 19 million he's been sold. It's making me sad because I remember he's the one who scored, I think, one of the greatest goals we've ever scored. Take a look at that. Oh, my God. What have I just witnessed? Villar has just scored the greatest goal in this club's history and I don't think we're topping this. Oh, oh my, I have no words. I legit have no words. A bicycle kick? Are you actually joking? But yeah, guys, now we need to get a replacement for Villa. I made a mistake maybe selling him, but we've got 19 million and we need to sign someone. I tried the two striker formation. That ain't it for me. So let's figure something out. While we're on the hunt to replace Villa, we're getting through some La Liga games, but it isn't going well. We got destroyed by Real Sociedad. At least the draw against Espanyol, but is this even enough? We're 15th in La Liga, even after signing Sergio Ramos. The truth is, if we don't bring in a proper replacement for Villar, I think we're gonna be in trouble. 19 million though, with that, it's not gonna be easy. But after a bit of scouting, I've managed to find quite possibly the perfect player, Pablo Torre. He doesn't quite get a chance at Barcelona because of, you know, Pedri and Gavi being there. Maybe at S2G Club the football, he could have a big impact. Plus, he's going to be a youngster in the team and we don't have too many of them, especially since we've signed so many older players. This this is perfect. Question is now whether we can afford him. 12 and a half million is his value. I'm going to offer 13 million. Xavi, come on. Let me have Pablo Torre. You're not anywhere going to use him. And there you go. 13.6 million. This is what we need. Oh, but don't forget, we're going to have to put a release clause on him, which is going to be painful, man. Oh, let's try and keep it to 50 million or something. That's not going to work. Ay, ay, ay. Uh, but we, 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 we're we just keeping the release clause at 37 million. <sighs> that's that's bad. But regardless, we're accepting the deal. It's done. And Pablo Torre is going to be the next player. There you go, boys. He's walking into the building. A former Barcelona product in a way. I mean, he didn't start at the Barca Academy, but we'll take him. Filling the boots of Villa is not going to be easy, but Pablo Torre, I'm sure he can do it. That's it. With Villa gone, we've replaced him with Pablo Torre. We brought in Sergio Ramos this window. Our job now is to avoid relegation no matter what and finish as high up as possible. We do that and we'll be, you know, settling in for a good foundation for the next season. Meanwhile, in the Spanish Cup, sadly, that's our journey done. We got knocked out by Eibar. Frustrating. That now makes La Liga everything that's left for us and we have to deliver. I do not want to be finishing in the relegation zone and going right back down. No, no, no. We've got to survive.
survive the drop. And guess who we're facing in our next game? Jason freaking Marquez. The last time we played Jason Marquez, he put in a masterclass and uh. then proceeded to take this photo while all our players were on the ground. Like, I cannot believe the cheek of this guy. And the game against Sevilla has kicked off, guys. I do not want to lose against them. Last time, Jason Marquez destroyed us. This time, we need to put in a good shift, a good performance, get the win against them, and maybe that can, you know, spur us on and avoid relegation and beyond. Oh, David <laughs> Silva. Oh my god! He got destroyed there! What was that? Okay, that's how this game is gonna go down, eh? Like, it's feeling super feisty for sure. But here's Pablo Torre, the new kid on the block, is playing in a lovely pass for David Silva, and David Silva actually scores! Let's go! 1-0 against Sevilla! Could this be the turning point of our season? Come on! Oh, but these guys have just nope. broken through our attack, and the keeper makes a good save. We'll need Mendes in this one. I gotta say, Pablo Torre might honestly be the best signing we've made, because he is dictating that midfield. Galeano now looking for a ball for Marcos Ray. I still want to see Ray deliver, which this season hasn't really happened. But Galeano might have a chance himself. What a save. Sergio Ramos is honestly doing an incredible job in this game. Against, by the way, his former club. And, okay, there he didn't do an incredible job. That, that was way too open. But thankfully, the post saved us. Oh, this is bad again. Nope. This is bad. Mendes is making save after save for us. Go on, Pablo. Pablo Torre again with a lovely ball and Galliano could be through on goal. Here goes Galliano, has to score. Bro, I can't, man. I can't. What is that finishing? First half done and where's Marquez? Huh? Where's the little fraud? He was piping up a lot, huh, with the smiling pics and everything. Where's he now? I shouldn't be saying that because you just know there's 45 minutes left in this one. Marcos Ray, though, is on the charge. Still Marcos Ray. Still Marcos Ray. Oh, come on. He's just had no luck whatsoever this season. I think I'm going to sub Ray off for Gabriel Figueroa. He's been scoring when never given the chance. And maybe we need that to kill this game off. No, 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 no. This is no, this is bad. This is bad. Marquez. Oh, he plays it back. Gets it back again. This passing from Sevilla is dangerous. But we just about get it away. Oh, Jason Marquez. That touch was really nice. Immobile. Ramos goes sliding in. Marquez has it. Gonzalez with the interception. Let's go. There's Gabriel Figueroa. How is anybody going to get the ball off him? Impossible task. As here he goes on the run. Gabriel Figueroa. Not the quickest of players. But he's got the strength. Maybe not. Uh. Full time, guys, and we've actually pulled it off. A win against Sevilla. Marquez, come outside. Ah, oh, we needed this, man. We needed this against Jason Marquez. And looks like that win against Sevilla was just what we needed to turn things around. We get a win against Rio. But next up, we've got Athletic Bilbao. And that's going to be a true test to see whether this runner form is just a bit of luck. Or maybe it's more than that. Okay, maybe it is just a bit of luck. Because Athletic Bilbao just burst through and destroyed us. So Luna, Marcos Ray, come on, oh, he gets the goal, that's more like it, perseverance from Marcos Ray, we're back in the game, let's go, no, 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 we could concede, and what was Mendes doing, he just falls flat on his back there, ah, oh. okay, we've got Galliano trying something, yeah, Marcos Ray, Marcos Ray, that's the Marcos Ray we know and love, come on, Oh, Marcos Ray has just broken through on a hat-trick right now. Marcos Ray scores a hat-trick. All the doubters and haters now can shush. Because Marcos Ray has just scored a hat-trick in La Liga. This is big. I'm just, oh, I'm, I'm tired, man. I'm, I'm just tired. We just concede silly goals every single game. Full time, we really should have won this game. No two ways about it. But hey, we fought back from a tough spot. Marcos Ray hat trick. Lots of positives to take from this. It's now been almost four to five games since we've actually lost the game and another draw. We're probably now in our best run of form. Honestly, guys, signing Sergio Ramos, but more importantly, Pablo Torre has been game changing. That midfield has been doing in the job for us. But up next, we're heading to the camp now to play Barcelona. Pablo Torre against his former club. Guys, I don't think there's been a better opportunity to get a result against Barca than this because we have not lost the game in our last five fixtures. The team has finally come together in La Liga this season. This is our chance. We win this game. Possibly we could finish in the top half of the table. Definitely we'll avoid relegation. This could be big. But instantly, Barcelona on the attack. But we've got Sergio Ramos 
Playing against Barca. You know he's going to give it everything. It's Galeano looking to chip this one. Marcos Rui controlling it. Going down. Referee, come on. Oh, Rafinha has broken through. But Gonzalez has done a good job. They might still have a chance here. Sergio Ramos with the defending. And we get it away. Sanogo looking inside. Moving it for Marcos Rui. Marcos Rui against Barcelona. He's done it. Marcos Rui against his former club. Oh, man. He's been waiting for this moment. Rui scores against Barca. Something you guys have been talking about how Marcos Rui's finished and he'll never score against his former club. He has now. And you bet the media headlines aren't going to be saying what they last said. Remember, this guy's worst talent in La Masia history. Guess what? He's just scored against Barca. They hated on him, but he's here still standing and scoring. Man, the first time was so nice. I had to do it twice. Oh, Marcos Ray fighting for every ball now. Look at him go. They can't stop him. They literally can't stop him. Barcelona players tumbling as Ray gets his second in the Camp Nou. This is unreal. No, no, no. Barca might get a goal back and they do it. Robert Lewandowski. This is a golden chance to beat a club like Barca. We can't let this get away from us. Marcos Ray. Once again, looking for space, finding it, but De Stegen denies it. And yes, guys, we've, we've actually pulled it off. We've been in Barcelona. Marcos Ruiz's madness has done it. I, I can't believe it. I legit can't believe it. This is a statement, guys, that we're, we're in the right direction. We've just been in Barcelona. With that result, guys, I think we're out of the danger zone and we've proved ourselves against one of the best teams in the league. This is perfect. We're not getting relegated this season. Since we don't really have much to play for, now because we're out of you know relegation threat and all what we're gonna do is just make our way to the end of the season basically because right now my focus is on next season to prepare for when we'll actually be able to maybe compete with all the big teams in La Liga hopefully we'll also see some solid growth and so we're making it through the season and we actually end up finishing 14th in La Liga which isn't too bad considering it was our first season in La Liga no threat of relegation we were way clear of the relegation zone and this this is what I wanted to see. Some amazing growth towards the end of the season. Marcos Ray 80 overall. Pablo Torres grown well. Jimenez, Gonzalez. This is literally perfect. It was actually Matias Sula ending up as our top scorer. What a talent we've got with him. Marcos Ray as well stepped up in the second half of the season for sure. But yes, yeah, slowly we've now built a foundation that I think could fire us into the top half of the table next season. I want to take S2G Club the football to the next level in La Liga. But to do that, we're going to have to really work hard for season three. Okay, before we wrap things up, I've just received an email from a confidential source. We've been very impressed with your club's performances, especially beating Barcelona. And we want to sponsor your club with money you've never seen before. With this, we believe together we can win the league title. Guys, are we, are we literally going to secure a mega sponsor for season three? Could that mean we'll have enough money to bring in some superstars? Oh boy, season three just got a bit more exciting. I'll catch you guys for that soon.